Hi everybody, welcome back to my backyard. Today is very sunny and I thought it would be a really nice time to review an oil paint set that I just received. So I got it from Jerry's and I'm not sure if you can, whoa, see, but it is huge and I'm very excited about it. And I always wanted to try this brand, so here I am. I am going to open it and it is called A Taste of Charvin. So this is a Charvin set of oil paints. Um, this is their fine set, or this their fine line, I should say. They have an extra fine line that has been um, processed a little bit more, and so I think the particles inside that make up the pigments are a little bit finer. Um, so that's their extra fine set. They come in smaller tubes and they're more expensive. I actually got a set too, so you can um, subscribe to my channel, please, and then you will find um, that one being reviewed later on. But this is just called A Taste of Charbon, and it's their fine set. Both lines are considered professional, and so I'm just really excited to see how these paints kind of come out. Now, I did already open the box. Um, and I was so overwhelmed because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I think there are 12 colors. Yeah. And they are huge. Yes. And they're all individually wrapped. And um, so we will see how it goes. But wow, that's a big tube. Okay. So that is 150 milliliters doesn't say should say here usually I'm used to the 37 but yes 150 right there so they're all in these boxes and we are going to unwrap them and see how it goes again I've never bought oil paints that are this big um, it will take me my whole life to use them up. I will probably be um, giving them to the next generation of oil painters in my family. So, um, yeah. So this, um, this company, Charvin, like I said, they have fine and extra fine, but their fine set, which is the least expensive, comes with only these large tube tubes. So I, there wasn't even an option to get a smaller tube. They just don't make them in small tubes. And so I got these on, well, I got them on sale, I guess, as a set, but they're also on sale individually. All right, so I am going to set up my palette right in front of you like this and actually let you see how these paints kind of pour onto the canvas or not onto the canvas, onto the palette. So this palette, by the way, is just a piece of subway tile. My husband's builder, and we end up with a lot of this sort of thing in our garage, so here we go. It's nice and glossy and like white glass almost. It's ceramic probably, and it's just really nice and smooth, and um, it blends colors and oils together really well, and it is also good for scraping when you need to get it out. So I'm going to just show you each of these colors and um, I want you to see how they lay onto the um, palette. All right, so I am unscrewing here and I am putting it on my palette. Wow, all right, that is... So I'm doing this too so you can see that there's oil. Some of these are really oily. Um, just in general, I'm not saying this particular brand, but some oil color is very oily. This one happens to be on the oily side. You see that oil drip? Nothing wrong with that. Um, so next we're gonna do Rubin Lake. And I don't really want it to drip. So I'm gonna do Rubin Lake right next to it. Yeah, I don't like this drip. All right, paper towel time. Ah. All right. I just didn't want the drip to interfere with the colors underneath. All right, so here's Rubin Lake. 
and there are some oil painters that had complained about some of these colors being too stiff out of the tube. They are a little stiff as far as like getting them out, but as you can see, they're very oily, so I would say they're kind of creamy. Um, the stiffness kind of comes from having a hard time pulling them out, and I've already lost the cap. Oh my goodness, here it is. Okay. And then ruby red, I needed red really bad, really badly. So I picked this set because it just had some colors that I needed. So this ruby red was really nice and um, like buttery, which I like. And as you can see, very drippy. So there's nothing wrong with that. I like, thing, I like them to be a little bit oily, but not too oily. I would say these seem a bit oily, but you know what, that's fine. Wow, this pink coral is exactly how I like it. No oil dripping out, but it was so smooth. All right, I'm gonna go with Cyclamen next. And this is like a very pretty fuchsia. No, it's like lilac, so pretty. And that's another one like this, where it's just very, um, very rich and buttery and not oily. And I'm gonna go with diamond orange next. This is just how I laid them out on my little swatch paper. So this is how I will do it for you guys. Wow, oily, do you see that diamond orange? All right. And then finally, anise, my least favorite spice in the world. I didn't realize it was yellow, I just, read the name on the website and I had no idea what color I was gonna end up with for anise. Okay, that is, it's yellowy green and it is very oily too. So if you like your colors on the oily side, I would say this Charvin Fine color would be right up your alley. I think for me it would work really well. Um, so let's get it onto the paper. Now, I will be upfront here. This paper is nothing special. It's not even for oil painting. It is watercolor paper. I also do watercolors and I just had this extra stuff laying around. I am not ever going to use watercolor paper to paint. However, this works really nicely when you just want to um, make a little swatch card and it will dry nicely, but the watercolor paper will absorb the um, oil, so. All right, I'm gonna just go one by one and show you what these look like. So ombre rose. So I'm gonna go really um, thin here. This is very pretty. It's like a dusty violet. I like that color, very nice. Hopefully that kind of does it justice. It just got a little cloudy out here, but really nice. And I didn't feel like it was very oily when I put it onto the page. Again, I did a thin layer, but I was really impressed with how the layer came out. So next I'm gonna do Rubine Lake, and I would call this like magenta. If you wanna talk Crayola box of crayons. Um, and that is A, a beautiful color, B, really nice and smooth. And I really like how that turned out. So far, I'm really impressed with this set. I know this is their least expensive line, but all the colors are really nice. All right, Ruby Red next. I actually have no red left in my collection, which is why I needed this set, because it was one of the only ones that had this really rich red in it. So this is just like your fire engine red, really just pure primary red really nice. Again, it laid on really nicely. It went really smoothly. I can already tell that these paints are going to be really nice to work with. Now, pink coral is right up my alley because I love pink. Now, I'll be honest, you don't need to buy pink coral because you can just mix ruby red with white or something like that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of mixing, not because I don't know how. I think it's important that everyone understand mixing and basic color theory, but um, a lot of times my paintings just 
need to get done very quickly and I'll take several days to do them, several weeks to do them, and I just wanna be able to spit the color right out of a tube. And that's why, for me, it doesn't always make a ton of sen sense to mix. So here's cyclamen. And again, that came out really nicely. I can't believe the smoothness. I'm only putting a little bit on, but there's no like, there are no lines. There are no paintbrush lines. It's just nice and even. I'm really happy with these. So here's diamond orange. I'm not sure where the diamond part goes, um, but that is, it's again, just a very bright orange. Like it. Apologize for my family making lots of noise back there. And here's our anise. So it's not quite a yellow yellow, but it's like, it's got a little bit of a green-ish to it. I would call it a mustard. I, it's exactly mustard, because it's not quite yellow yellow. It's more like, it's more like, um, yeah, like almost a little bit of brown in it. Okay, that looks awesome. And I am going to wipe all of this away. I know that seems wasteful, and it is, and I apologize, but Sometimes there's wasting in oil painting. And that is just how it is. I try to be really conservative when I actually paint and... I'm not showing you my good habits right now. All right. I will take this away. And now, whoops. Yeah, okay, now we're gonna go with some greens. So here is bamboo green. And you gotta really use force because the tube is so big. Okay, that was a nice small amount. So that's a pretty green. Bamboo green is a good way to describe that color. Next, we're gonna go with green shadow. So it's called green shade here but on the website they said green shadow, no problem. This is on the dark side here. Oh, I just took too much out, okay. And the cap is here. All right, next is deep water green. It was also water green deep. By the way, these are made in France and they use poppy oil and it says creamy past. I'm gonna say that's pat paste, I don't know, but it's made in France. This, I love this color, this is pretty. So they also had a water green light you can get individually but this one is water green deep so pretty sometimes just certain colors I'm just really attracted to and I will buy it even though I don't plan on ever using it in a painting because I don't usually use a lot of greens but anyways um, there we go here is a nice blue lagoon oh my gosh okay you really have to they're kind of stiff in the tube. Even though they're coming out oily, they're a little stiff in the tube, so you really have to um, use your muscles to get them out. And the final one is Amethyst Parma, which is so pretty. And I will say none of these last couple that I did were oily at all. Whoa, except that was not my intention. See what I'm saying? Like, you can't, it's, I needed to put so much pressure behind that and then a huge amount came out. I am not happy about wasting that. I will use it today. So all of these colors are not on the oily side at all. I'd say bamboo green was the most oily. And look how pretty that is. That would be really nice for trees. It's hard to mix perfect colors sometimes. You know, you could use some greens and yellows to do that, but depending on the greens and yellows you have, you might not be able to achieve that same exact color. And by the way, between each color, I am just using Gamsol in order to clean my brush. And here's green shadow. 
And this is pretty. It's almost like a um, earth green a little bit. Very deep, a little bit of blue. Pretty. Actually have a similar color from the Lucas brand. And water green deep is actually a little bit oily. I just love that. That is so pretty. Bye, Bye. Bye buddy. And I'm outside today, so I don't have to worry about ventilation or um, worrying about breathing in the gamsol or anything like that. Here's Blue Lagoon. Look at that. That's pretty. So pretty. This is a really nice set. Just all the colors here. Very nice. And I'm impressed with how they kind of handle, too. And so my favorite, Amethyst Parma. Oh, so pretty. Don't worry about it, buddy. And so here is our final bit. So I'm going to kind of bring these over to the camera so you can get a really good look. Like I said, I think they were, they, they weren't too stiff. They definitely had a high amount of oil in it, but a lot of pigment too. I think all of these colors were really nice. And the set's beautiful. I can't wait to use it to paint. So I'm gonna try to really train in here and get you to see all the colors. The clouds have kind of blocked the sun. And so, you know, you might not really see the full scope here of what these colors are like, but they are really pretty. And the ruby red is just like a very primary fire engine red. And Rubine Lake actually is like magenta and ombre rose is a dusty violet. So those are the three colors I feel like aren't coming out or might not quite look how I see them. But all in all, really impressed. And if you subscribe to my channel, then you'll see the next video that I put out, which I'm going to do the same exact thing and it's going to be um, on another Charbon set, but instead of their fine, the next one will be extra fine. So I hope you enjoyed, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment, and I'm always looking forward to hearing from you, and if you have a suggestion of another video that you wanna see made, let me know. Thanks for watching, have a great day.